Good morning viewers and welcome back to another episode of Barham Engines. Right then guys, it is Friday, which is always a good day. Uh, the weather is beautiful, the sun is shining out there. As you can see, got the Lambo in today for a little, um, a little wheel turn in. Um, weather's meant to be really nice the weekend, so hope you all have a fantastic weekend. But anyway, before we get out in that workshop, guys, two things I just want to mention. Um, the first thing is, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Do it now. Hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified whenever we do a video. And secondly, guys, I never normally do this, um, but I did have an email off a, a lady called Emma. Um, Emma said it is her, her partner's birthday today. His name's Neil Maguire, so happy birthday, Neil. Um, and she also says, please let her watch her uh, videos from time to time. Uh, but when you do, if you could just get out there and clean her car, that'll be fantastic. But happy birthday, Neil. Right, we're just refacing the second Audi block now. This is the Audi TTS block. So you can see I bought it the plus uh, half a mil. Um, just wanted to show you this, Audi in their wisdom, um, now this is a great idea, so you've got these type of dowels, you've got one here and you've got one over there um, and they're very very difficult to get out if you had to try and get them out with a set of mole grips or something, but Audi in their wisdom do a through hole, so you can see all I've done is I've tapped that dowel for the head gasket down through, you can see it jutting out the bottom um, and then all I've got to do once I face the the block is tap it up to the depth I need and that is perfect so that saves demolishing the dowel um, or buttering the hole drilling it out very good idea don't know why um, all the other manufacturers can't do that um, but this is a three thou cut and it looks like it's cleaning definitely on that end at the minute so hopefully um, hopefully it cleans with just the three thou and then we can get that honed but over here you can see we've got the Golf R block. Now I'm just going to set the ball gauge up, hone this one out. There's about two thou to come out of there with a bit of luck. Um, and then we can get that on the engine stand, get it all nicely cleaned. Right guys, so over here Paul is dummy building the Golf R engine. So just to low down, we've, I think we've polished this, Paul, the crank. Yes. Yeah. Measured it, polished it. Um, all okay so obviously by polishing it we haven't removed any material uh, but the reason we're putting this in a video is because just goes to show this crank when fitted spins lovely um, so by feel you would think it would be okay wouldn't you by feel it felt lovely no knocks in this as you respect but it's spun quite freely yeah so absolutely you, spins freely you um, think we'd have a good fairly big bearing sort of clearance and you know round bearing size that's right, general. yeah. So, you know, if anyone was building this at home without any measuring gear, you would think that would be absolutely fine. Um, but the problem is we've fitted the ARP main stud kit. And what we tend to find when fitting this kit is it because it gives that extra torque um, in the sort of, I suppose, the 12 to 6 o'clock um, measurement, it mm. goes, it tends to squeeze up about half a foul, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and sometimes the size can tighten up so as well, can't they? Yeah, so we've measured it and it is, it has tightened up about half a thou below bottom limit. So you've got nearly a thou of, um, a thou of limit, top and bottom, um, but this is about half a thou below bottom. So we put the crank in, talked it all up, and it still spins absolutely lovely. And now Paul's plastic aged one of the end mains and this is for all you people that boo plastic aging well it's certainly got its place i mean we we have a quick little um gander over here i mean you're about i would say about 1.6 thou if you want to be pedantic yeah so 1.5 1.6 thou um and on a journal size like this we wouldn't really want to run any less than two would we no i, I would be happy sort of 1.8, 1.9, but two would be nice on the, on the block like this. Yeah, um, so if we line home this, um, even to bottom limit, then it's going to be on size, but for what he's going to be running, I think he's going to be running 450 horsepower through this, so yeah, I, mean, I would say a thousand and a half, probably end enough. We want, really, yeah, we want a decent clearance of sort of a high-powered engine. Um, 
But obviously, it goes to show because it's, it's tightening up half a thousand sides. Yeah. Um, you think you're going to be below or down to a sow bearing clearance on the sides here. That's right, yeah. Um, to me, that's recipe for uh, running, your, running your main bearings, that is. It is, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was just mainly really to show why Paul uses the plastic gauge or why we use the plastic gauge just to check. It's, you know, we wouldn't. If the engine's apart and we've got the measuring gear, then you're obviously going to measure everything, make sure it's correct. Yeah. Um, but it is a good guide. It's really the only way, apart from measuring, to tell whether it's going to be running enough clearance. Really, it's um, a lot of you know a lot of people sort of think, oh, you, you've only got a line hone these of alley blocks, but even of a steel block like this, um, it's just as important. I yeah. didn't think it would close up quite as much as it did. No, it that's has. it. So and that half a thou running just that half a foul less clearance to what you should do can cause catastrophe. We've seen it before in big ends, haven't we? Yeah, I've seen it in big ends. I mean, if it was a road engine, you might get away with it, but we don't, we're not on the business of getting away with it. You want to do it no. properly, especially if you're running big power. You need that um, bearing clearance, you need that oil flow. So Exactly, yeah. This has got to go off a line home now. But it? as I say, I shan't turn it all the way, but just by, um, just by feel, I mean, it's notched up a little bit because we've got yeah, notched up off. a bit, but once you talk that up, it turns absolutely perfect. Ooh, you can right. just turn it with two fingers. So as I say, go and by feel. Um, you would think there's nothing wrong with that, but certainly in our eyes, it's not running enough clearance. There's a lesson there. A lesson to be learned. Lesson Paul. to be learned. Right, so we've got the uh, Golf R and the TTS all palleted up there. Um, got a couple of cylinder heads to um, to send to Charlie at CTM as well just to cut the seats on because obviously our Centronic unit has not arrived yet um, so we've worked it out um, all we've got to do is take half a thou out of those mains is that right Paul yeah bro just about half a thou and then that's going to give us about two thou running clearance on the main bearings on both um, get those heads done and there's the Pinto head in there as well so um, once that's done, we can get the Pinto put back together with a bit of luck. Um, but more importantly, while we're out here, Paul, we've had a box arrive. The mystery box is no longer a mystery. Um, many of you guys have said not to keep going on about this, but I'm going to completely ignore that because I'm pretty excited, to be honest. Yep. It's the first big thing we've had arrive for this. Um, and it's the engine, gearbox and diff, etc. for the E30. So this is the 3.2 E36 engine um, with all the ancillaries on it. And that's why we bought it really. She's got absolutely everything on it. Um, he's even got the ECU and, and all his prop shaft down there, I think. But this is actually out of an E30, this motor. So although we're gonna build it, clean it all up and make it all fresh and pretty. Got a spare manifold over there. Nice well, fancy clutch on her, mate. Got a bit of a fancy clutch nice on her, fancy but yeah, as I say, this is out of a, tra a track car E30, and it was all running fine, so um, it's all ready to go, really. The only thing we are going to do on this, now I've been speaking to a chap called Spencer Latham, and Spencer is one of these that does the E30 recreation um, M3s, and he fits these motors all the time. He's been really, really helpful this week to me, and he said what this will have on it if it goes straight into the E30 with a standard subframe on is the 5 Series uh, Sump, which he said yeah. I wouldn't use if you're using it as a track car because it hasn't got the scavenge, um, the scavenge pipe for the oil pump or something. He said what you want to run is the, um, the 3.2, the proper sump for this, and he's going to sell us his um, bespoke subframe for the front. So that's the way we're going to go. Um, he said, I think under braking, the oil seems to go to the back of a 5 Series sump um, and can starve it of oil. So that's certainly what we don't want to be doing, hey Paul? No, it's all here though, mate. It's all here. He's all here. Very, very You've excited. Got your um, and to be honest, although it's all grubby and you know, it's a 25 year old motor, I suppose, isn't it? Well, 30 it, years give old. Give it the bare room lick over. Give it the bare room lick. Give it a refresh. Got a few bits here in some bags and oh, all yeah. they are. The mystery bags. Shall we have a look, shall we? Let's have a little look. Oh mate, what oh, have no. we got? Oh, we've got a oh, got a Ram air filter. A Ram air filter, Ram, which yeah? we definitely will not be using. Nope, that looks horrible. There. Sorry, mate. Um, just a box one, mate. Instead of ah, uh, oh, that looks like a. Oh, they've got a steering column there. I think it's like a steering column modified oh, sort of debris, which 
don't think we need. That's your gear linkage. Gear linkage, which we probably will need. Oh, you might need it actually. Oh, really? Yeah. All, most of this is going to be cleaned up in our trusty vapour blaster, of course. Oh, it's just what it Now, this it. motor. Oh, what we've got here? Paperwork. Look at that. It's got the full M3 paperwork, etc. Now, I'm suspect. Hold on a minute. What we got? Jersey cream fudge. Oh, my giddy arm. Is it full, though? Oh my oh, god, mate. Look at that. He's treated us. Look at that. He's chucked it in with no extra cost. Yeah. Well, six and a half. We'll have that with a cup of coffee in a minute. <laughs> yep. Um, I expect the paperwork, because this engine's come from Jersey, it's took us about three or four weeks to get it out of Jersey. We obviously had to pay the tax, which we can claim back with a bit of luck. Um, but the paperwork, I suspect, is probably something to do with customs, is it? Well, that's a. To prove what it is and where it was actually That's an M3 from. Uh, warranty and service handbook. Nice. Free series. We'll keep that. And that's that's an M3 owner's handbook. So that's probably the well potentially the car the engine came out of. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'll have a little look through that paperwork. But yeah, so far all looks like it's here. Radiator, although we don't need that rad. The one that's in the car is pretty good, I think. Is that right, Isaac? I think so. Got Exciting got times, mate, isn't it? Very cool. Obviously, in between, whenever we get, probably between now and the beginning of next year, whenever we get time, we'll get this on a s engine stand and we can plod on with a few between bits. Between now, now and tomorrow morning? Probably, yeah, no, I'm <laughs> not going to do that. <laughs> no. Customer's work comes first, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we're probably just, all we're going to do with this is freshen it up, um, set of shells and comrod bolts, which they're a bit renowned for. I mean, what's a set of cams between friends, eh? Pair of cams, yeah. may as well, while yeah, you're at it. Uh, Nice but, yeah. pork job, maybe. What's a put and polish between friends, you know? <laughs> Rebor. Rebor, so yeah, what's a rebore between friends? Well, of course, we're going to balance the crank assembly. I think we should. Light and flywheel. Yeah. Well, I don't know what we've got on there. Is it what's light it? and flywheel? Um, it doesn't look it. So. Oh, well, it will have. What's, <laughs> yes, well, light, what's a light and flywheel between friends, <laughs> I was eh? going to say. Not that we're only going to give it a fresh What's a up, race engine You know, this friends? is going to turn into a major build. This is going to turn into a very expensive build, yeah. But yeah, very excited. So it's the end of the day on Friday, and that is why you have an apprentice, look. Volunteered to clean the Lambo, proper good lad. Not in work time, mind, it's the end of the day. So today, guys, no moaning, nothing like that. If it's nice where you are, weather-wise, um, have a lovely weekend, and um, we will see you, oh, it's the first weekend, we haven't had a bank holiday for a while, but yeah, we'll see you Monday. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Have a lovely weekend. Cheers.